Sing aloud with gladness. God is gathering the people. From the farthest parts of the earth we come. All who struggle, all who labor with new life. Those who are weeping, God will console. Those who get lost, find a clear path home. Let us worship the God who gathers us. Amen. Amen. Then afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions, even on male and female slaves. In those days, I will pour out my spirit. I will show portions in the heaven and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall turn into darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there shall be those who escape. As the Lord has said, the among the survivors shall be those who own the Lord calls. Amen. Today's scripture is from the book of Joel, and this book is very short, only three chapters long. It was written in a time when the kingdom of Judah was experiencing prosperity and tranquility, and people were happy. Their stomachs were full, and they had money and peace. It was known as the golden era of King Uzziah's reign, and because there was virtually nothing for the people to worry about, they soon began to stray away from God once again. They were enjoying their wealth and living life to the fullest, experiencing material prosperity. Yet, ironically, they were suffering from spiritual poverty. But interestingly enough, people of Prophet Joel's time were very smart and have learned from their history. Although they really didn't place God as the center of their lives and prioritize faith, 
they continued to offer worship and prayer on a regular basis. They felt that if they stopped doing these activities, then something bad will happen as it did to their ancestors. So during this time, the temples and synagogues were not abandoned, but filled with people offering sacrifices and prayers. However, as you can imagine, God was not pleased with their actions. Yes, God wanted prayers to be lifted up and also desired for worship to take place. But God knew that their actions were meaningless and their hearts empty. Worshiping and praying to God became a routine chore and God was displeased. You and I know throughout the Bible when God is not happy, that is a huge indication that something bad is going to happen. For example, when the Israelites angered God, wars, plagues, and much suffering took place. So as expected, during Prophet Joel's time, the kingdom was hit with not one, but two natural disasters. First, there was a locust plague that devoured all living vegetation on land. Then, the kingdom of Judah was hit with famine due to a severe drought. The message was clear. Repent and you will be forgiven and these sufferings will all go away. So today's scripture reading picks up right after God promises restoration and blessings to the people if they choose to follow God's way. And through prophet Joel, this promise was first spoken to the people of Judah and now we are able to receive it. Joel 2.28 speaks of a promise and what God plans to do. And I have faith that this will be fulfilled, that God has every intention of pouring out this blessing mentioned in Joel to you, me, and all people. This is a message of hope. During an era when people were deprived of any spiritual connections, God promises them spiritual gifts such as prophecy, visions, and dreams. Many of our churches no longer dreams or have the ability to cast clear vision for the future. Once thriving, fruitful, and abundant ministries began to experience spiritual drought. And the sad news is that this is not only happening in our district, but all around the world. Mainline churches are losing members on an annual basis. And in some areas, there are beautiful buildings still standing, but with no people. Where do you think your church and ministry will be in 20 years? Some believe we won't make it, while others believe we have potential and great possibilities that lie within us. And to be honest, I don't know what will become of our district in 20 years. As you have heard me say time after time, we're in a liminal season. And so predicting with certainty where we will be becomes a very difficult task. But I find comfort in today's text. It provides assurance that God is not done with us yet. You see, the people of Judah stopped dreaming dreams and seeing visions. People stopped prophesying and God was absent from their lives. But as our creator is gracious, even before we are aware of our shortcomings and the need to repent, God is ready to forgive us and pour out the spirit. And through this spirit, the drought we are experiencing will cease and the rain of blessings will come. The healing and restoration of the land, body, and soul will be provided. And God takes time today to reiterate that all will be blessed and no one will be left out. Did you catch that? As you may be aware, throughout the Old and the New Testaments, women, elderly, and children were often ignored. For example, when census was taken, only men were counted and others were left out. But in today's passage, God mentions both sons and daughters, as well as the young and the old. The old who have no reasons to dream will once again have dreams and be revitalized. The young who lack life experiences and wisdom to project a successful future will now see visions. And our children will prophesy and play an important role in offering us edification. This is a promise of a great new beginning. God will empower and help us to dream big and so that we may faithfully bear witness to the gospel of Christ. This assurance is exactly what we need during liminality. 
So in order for us to live into the future that is stated in today's text, we have to live each and every day claiming this promise, anticipating to experience the Spirit falling afresh on us and filling our lives. And that one day, the bounty of God will be ours to enjoy and relish. And not just for a few, but for all. There will be plenty, more than enough to go around. My hope is that our churches will lead the way. Lead the way for us to live a life that is worthy of Christ, equipping us to live in this secular world as Easter people who wear witness to new life, new beginning, and hope that are in store for us. Are we ready to see what will happen in our district, in our own churches? I truly wonder what will happen on the day of the Lord. From history and past experience, we know that amazing things happen when the Holy Spirit falls afresh on us. The Christian church began on Pentecost with the dissension of the Spirit and when the disciples were filled with the third person of the Trinity. Peter, who once denied Jesus three times out of fear, completely changed after the Pentecost and preached boldly about Christ. And that day, we are told, 3,000 hearts were changed and dedicated to Christ. Today, this scripture passage reminds of us what is required from our ministries to flourish once again and what God plans to do with us. As I get to know my churches within the district, there are congregations that are definitely Christ-centered and carrying out the work of the Lord. And then there are those that have lost their way and have veered off. They now function more like a social agency than a faith community. And my hope is for all our churches in the district to live out Joel 2.28 and become a visible sign of God's grace and blessing. May the Holy Spirit fill us anew. Let us dream and dream big. See visions and live according to the word. Anything is possible in Christ. Restoration, healing, renewal, you name it. It can happen. So get ready. Our journey is just beginning. Come, Holy Spirit, fall afresh on us. Let us pray. Spirit of living God, fall afresh on us. We are open to see where you lead us. We are open to witness new possibilities and opportunities. May we experience this spirit that Prophet Joel speaks of today, and may we be transformed. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Aloha, keolo mana. Um, I am still recovering from the stomach flu and my daughter is almost better. Um, but thank you so much for your thoughts and your prayers these last couple of days. Um, so just a few announcements. We have virtual worship. We had it today. And then we also have virtual worship uh, next Sunday. And we are doing this just to stay on the safe side um, regarding the skyrocketed, you know, COVID numbers that we've seen because of the Omicron variant. variant. Um, and this Wednesday, we have admin council meeting. So if anyone needs to submit agendas, uh, please do so to Kaola um, by Tuesday. So that's all the announcements for today. I hope everybody has had a good week and everybody can stay safe. And I hope to be fully recovered by next week. Thank you. Just as I've stated, this church has gone through a tough time this year, but we continue to reach out to our community and we continue to make a difference and to be the light of Christ in the Enchanted Lake community. This church is sustained by your pledges and your offering each week. Please remember to continue to send in your offering by writing a check to the church. Our address is 1425 Keolu Drive, or you could donate through PayPal. Thank you so much for continuing to support the church, to support its mission, to know God, to love and serve others. Thank you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 